Hi, everyone. I'm here today to talk about burnout culture in LARP organization, um, which will be the longest, probably also rentiest part of this. This is better, I'm sorry. Um, however, I do not believe in renting alone. I also want to offer some solutions, so that will be the second part of that talk. And I am actually going to talk about this subject from a very personal experience, um, because I am currently on sick leave for over a year by now for mental health reasons. And the main reason for that is actually burnout. So for me, it is important to raise awareness about this. Um, and if talking about this can get others to uh, not have to go through these trenches that I have gone through, then I think it's worth being here. So starting on that, I think this one is quite self-explanatory. Burnout does not determine your value as an organizer. It does not determine the quality of your LARP. I think this is an important one. I think this is a reminder that we probably also all agree with. However, agreeing with it now is not the same as agreeing when you are in the middle of organizing yourself. This is something that's easy to forget. It's something when you're in the middle of shit going down, you don't remember this. And we can print it out, put it in every organizer room out there, and it might help. But maybe we should also wonder, is this really only an individual problem? Or is there something more behind it? Is there a cultural problem, maybe? And well, I think there is. I think LARB organization buys into the toxic capitalist concept of startup culture. Sorry if this hurts some of you, but actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I, I honestly think this is the root of a lot of burnout. Um, startup culture, like the one in Silicon Valley, is honestly a toxic thing of the past decade, like Wall Street, for example, has been in the past. So this is something we should be aware of. I also think, honestly, you can notice that it is finally being addressed. Long live Gen Z for that. Um, it is even being talked about and written about in corporate contexts. So if even American corporate startup culture is starting to see a little bit of this, very slowly, but still, maybe we as a LARP community should also start thinking about this and maybe address this issue. Um, and I am not going to defend this statement in detail, to be fair, that's not the point. I am going to point out some similarities, and I hope that this might get you thinking about this and maybe accepting this idea and reflect from there. And I'm starting with the easy similarities, <laughs> like the ones that also make it understandable why we buy into this concept. Um, so there is being the trailblazer, the passion project, the small group of like-minded individuals who are making a difference, we're creating a new world, uh, we're creating change, we're bringing something new into the world, all of that. Cool, right? But there's also a risk of self-glorification. There is a persona cultus. There's a cultus culture of overworking where we have way too small teams for all of the efforts we're making. We are being blinded by our passion, which also makes us not notice our burnouts. Um, we want to keep control over everything. We take big financial risks, and very often there is very little room for failure. So these are the less positive ones, but I think we can all agree that they are very much there. So on that, I have a call to action for all of you, and this one I think you might like. So, I think we shouldn't be ashamed of this comparison and of these similarities. Um, currently, I mean, you might have been feeling like a little bit of a feeling in your gut that's like, oh shit, I don't like this mirror, it's a bit confrontational. Um, and it's normal to feel like that, but don't give in to the urge to go into the defensive here, because 
this is the society, the, this is the way the society we've been raised in has been built. Um, it's difficult to spot it when you're in the middle of it. Also, the LARP community is still a very young community. We're still growing. Growing pains are okay. But we should let go of our inner elons. We should let go of our egos. And really, we should not try to hold on to that perfect image of ourselves. Instead, I think we have to show the courage to do better here, to see this as a challenge rather than something to be ashamed of, and to really move forward from there. And I do think we already have the tools to make that change. It's just most of those tools we have been teaching to our players, but we haven't really transposed them to how we organize. And that might be something we need to think about, because in the end, we are good in creating alternative realities, and we are a grassroots project for change. So this is something we should also be here. And I'm just going to touch on some tools we already have and use for the players in the form of memes. Um, <laughs> but like, I'm just briefly touching on them and let's continue talking about this after. And the first one is communication. Communication is a pillar of project management, of expectation management, and of framework design. It is important, like good communication from organization is important towards players, but also towards crew. So let's not forget that part. Um, it's also about daring to be honest, about being ready to communicate openly and also respectfully towards players as well as crew, about the good as well as the bad. And within the crew, communication can be about boundaries and weaknesses. And equally, it can be about daring to state your limits and when you're at them, but also about daring to ask for help. Which brings me to the next one, which is creating safe spaces. Creating safe spaces isn't just something we should be doing for our players. We should also do it for our crew and for our organization. Allowing for room for mistakes is a crucial part of this. We shouldn't have to be perfect. We should create safe spaces in which we are allowed to make mistakes. And let's just strive for a supportive environment in which we all have each other's back and are ready to support each other and help each other. Delegation. In this context, it means don't play to win. Because this is something we are really good in creating for our players as a mindset. However, as organizers, we fail to do that for ourselves. Don't hoard all of your tasks when you're the main organizer. Don't organize to win. Organize to co-create and to lift. Dare to divide your game. Help others and allow them to make mistakes, referring again to the previous one. And also, and this ties into the next one, dare to trust because it's easier to delegate when you dare to trust others. And it also helps to let go of control. So trust. If you're able to trust, you're able to step away from micromanaging your LARP. So instead of going into a stress reaction, because that's very often what micromanagement is, instead, like, don't try to keep control over your LARP, but try letting go of it and trust your crew, but also your players, because they're also all there for that. So trust them to run with what you've created and see where everything goes from there and grows from there. And I think that that's important. Like, let's get into a mindset where we are ready to jump into the unknown together and I think that a lot of beautiful things can spark from there. 
and I hope that that, for all of you, oh, sorry, this one, creates this mindset <laughs> where we learn to love the LARP again. Thank you. <laughs>